Welcome to another week, another farm, this time with Farmer Lawrence. How are you, Lawrence? Very good, how are you? Thanks for having us. You picked a perfect day to have us outside in the middle of February. It's probably the hottest day in February we've ever had. Sometimes you get lucky. Right? Sometimes you get lucky. This has worked good. We are in the woods, which you wouldn't think you'd farm a whole lot of things in the woods, but here in Canada, beautiful Ontario, you're farming maple syrup. That's right. And it's coming out of the sugar bush. Uh -huh. um, so maybe we can look over at the tree first. Yep. Show us how we, how we, where we start. Okay. Right here. Sugar maple. Yep. It's only, it, you can't be tapping any other kind of tree but a sugar maple. Well, you can tap other maples, but sugar maples are the best. Are the best. That's and right. you've got, I mean, when I was a kid, we hauled in like buckets of sap with grandpa. He thought that was a great job. And as a kid, we thought it was a great job too. You don't have buckets. What's with the blue line? Well, when we got, we got a lot of buckets when we were younger. And eventually we said, we can't do that anymore. <laughs> so we uh, switched to a more modern method with a uh, pipeline and a vacuum system to collect, gather the sap. So you put this in and it's, it's just all attached to one line? That's right. All these uh, small blue lines travel mm -hmm. from tree to tree on the end. Come on out of there. Of course, here's our uh, spile. A little bit of vacuum there. Wicks that sap away when it drips out of that hole. So it's a... Uh, Basically very simple. So we get a little bit of frost at night, sun shines in the day, sap starts to flow, away it goes down their lines through our tank. So that means you're pretty weather dependent then in terms of what you need to make sap. Oh yeah, Mother Nature's the boss for sure. Is the boss. So what is what is perfect weather for you for sap to run? Oh perfect would be like minus two or three and then a nice sunny day and five or six. Five or six. Yeah. And that so so is that what like why does that affect the sap coming out of the tree? Well, so uh, the tree actually recharges when it cools down and it freezes up. That's when it draws fresh sap from the root system. Mm -hmm. So when it thaws out, sap continues its way up to the uh, branches to feed the buds so the new leaves can come out. So you're basically catching that sap as yeah. it goes up and down the tree. That's why right. you can only do it in the springtime. Yeah, we're just, in, we're just intercepting a little bit of that flow and uh, taking it to make some syrup out of it. So now, how many of these taps would you have? You've got these kind of spread out over a few bushes. Right. How many taps are you? do you have in a year? Well, there's probably uh, somewhere between seven and 8,000 taps in our operation. It's a lot of work. You've got to cut all the wood, clean everything up, put your lines up, make sure everything works, then you're ready to go. Well, and that's, so right behind us, we've got a real nice pile of wood here. That's right. Now, are you going to burn this to make maple syrup? Well, actually, uh, no. Uh, we have a lot of people come to visit us here at the farm, a lot of uh, school kids and stuff, so that's all going to get burned under this kettle here to show people how... You have split all this make. wood and you're going to burn it under that. That is... Right. You put a pile of work into this. Like how many people would you have come tour the farm? Well normally we have, uh, we'll have quite a few, over 6,000. 6,000 people. Right. When do you start having people? Well we start next weekend Yeah. and then we run for six weeks. Six, six weeks weekends, after? Open to the public. The rest of the time, it's uh, a lot of school kids come out. To Shall we go up and see how the boiler's getting along? Certainly, let's go. Well, Lawrence has toured us around the uh, sugar bush. Brother Colin's boiling the sap today. Colin, what are we looking at out here? Well, out here is where when they bring the sap home from the bushes, we have eight wood lots that they bring the sap home from, and we just put it in these tanks, okay? So basically, we got one, two, three tanks that we store the sap in, mm -hmm. okay? So once you put it in these tanks, I also have a tank out behind, I pump it back to, that feeds the reverse osmosis machine. What's the reverse osmosis machine? Okay. Reverse osmosis is a machine that basically takes out a bunch of the water before we cook it. It saves a lot of time, a lot of energy. Oh, what, can we take a look? Sure thing. Okay, this ander is a reverse osmosis machine. This machine is a two-post machine. Basically, there is a high-pressure pump back here that creates a lot of pressure. Right now, we're at about 350 PSI. So it's pumping it through this. It's called a membrane in here, okay? So basically, it's a eight inch by 40 inch membrane. There's one, and then there's another back there. So these will do about 500 gallons an hour of maple sap. Oh, wow. And okay. those, how do the membranes work? How does it know to, toss water out and keep the sap in. 
Okay, the membranes are specially designed for the maple industry. It's also used for lots of other things like purification of water and stuff. Oh, yeah. Like, same yeah. idea, right? Yeah. Okay, so basically there, there's a, a filter. That's what I tell the kids when they come. We basically have a really, really fine filter. We pump the sap through it. The sugar that we want to keep to make the maple syrup will not go through that sugar, really? through that filter. Yeah. Okay? So the water goes through the filter, and this pipe up here, you can see it's clear. Yeah. That is pure water coming out of the, out of the sack. Pure water, you could drink it. You can you can drink it. Isn't There's that nothing. amazing? We had a guy test it. There's absolutely nothing in it. Really? Yeah, really. That's incredible. Okay? So you can see these gauges. This is gallons per minute. So this is my concentrate. Okay, so this is what I'm keeping. We're basically keeping about, uh, well, it's it right there, four gallons per minute. Membrane one is, is taking out about seven gallons per minute of water. Membrane two is about five gallons per minute of water. So we're taking out about, what's the math there? 12, 12 gallons per minute of water, and we're keeping four gallons per minute of concentrate. Of concentrate of what's going to become maple syrup. Right on. So we're basically keeping, if I'm asking, 20%. Yeah. Right? So that's actually, do, that's doing quite a bit to save you in that heating and cooking process. That is right. It, it saves a lot of time and a lot of energy. Yeah. And obviously you've got now that sap. Where to from here? Okay. So after it goes to the RO, it gets pumped up top to a tank outside. And then it runs in the tank up there. We call it a ballast tank because every pan has a float on it. <coughs> okay. So we want a ballast tank. So it has the same amount of pressure on the float at all times, so the pan stays nice and level. Oh, okay. okay. And this is the evaporator. This, this is the evaporator. How does it work? Come right around here. Okay. This is the evaporator. Basically, what it does is it evaporates off the water, so that's why it's called the evaporator. Okay. So this is called a flue pan. And right here is where the sap is coming into the flue pan. So every pan has a float on it, so it's always a constant level. So as, as it's being cooked off or evaporated off, there's always fresh syrup coming in. All so right. it's just continuous flow. It's a continuous flow when we're cooking. Okay, mm -hmm. so basically when you're cooking, the raw sap will be back here, and as it goes through, it's getting cooked more, and it's getting cooked, it's gonna be more like syrup. So it just keeps moving through. So as farther through the system, the thicker it is. Mm -hmm. And that process, all it's really doing is boiling the water off and you're keeping more off. of that sugar. We're keeping the sugar. Yeah, okay, yep. cool. Okay, so it goes through the flue pan. It's got three channels in, starts at the back, comes to the front, goes to the back, comes to the front again. Then it comes off, off on the other side into these pans, we call them syrup pans. They're a flat bottom pan. Okay, so basically same thing. The other side has got a float on it, so it starts over there, comes across, it just keeps making its way through. Now, how are you heating this? Okay, here at Fort Rose, we're still burning fire, wood for most of our heat, mm -hmm. okay? Chopping wood, you chop your own wood? We cut all the wood. You chop I, a lot of wood. I, I sit on the track for most of the time. <laughs> Let the boys do it, the younger That's guys? Right. <laughs> but they must be pretty, like we were looking, Lawrence showed us one of the piles back there that you use just under that, um, you know, kettle, basically yeah, back yeah. in the woods. How, do you have any idea how much wood I, you'd use? I don't really know, it's a lot. It's it's just, <laughs> you, you must do it in your sleep then. <laughs> yeah, basically when this skin is nice and level, it'll make about 140 liters of syrup. And how many liters of syrup are you hoping to in the year? Uh, generally, we like to make about 85 to 9,000 liters. 9,000 liters. That's a lot of those carts yes, of wood. Yes. Pretty impressive. So then, obviously it's coming here, but you've got a second, what, an, another evaporator? Is that what that is okay. too there? So basically, we're, we're doing most of the cooking with wood. We finish burning furnace oil. Why? Why the change? When we're burning with furnace oil, it's a nice constant heat. So when you throw in fresh wood, you get a lot of heat off right off the bat. And when maple syrup is getting close to being done, it gets really foamy. So we can have issues with it boiling over the pan. Oh, okay. okay. So basically it comes across onto another float, okay, into the finishing pan. Okay, right this is a two and a half by six oil fire finisher, like I said. It just comes in there, goes through all the channels. And you look in here, there's not a lot of foam in here. No. And you come down here. And you see this quite a bit. Oh, there's getting to be okay. quite a bit more. So what would happen if 
if it did get too foamy, what would happen? It boils over the side. Just boils over. Just yeah. like a pot of potatoes in the in the house. Right it, that that'll do that. And it'll make a mess. I've done it before. So then how does it know not to let it boil over? How does it know? Okay, basically when you're cooking syrups, the boiling temperature of maple syrup is 219 Fahrenheit. Oh, okay. Okay, so when water boils at 212, syrup boils at 219. Mm -hmm. So when it gets hot enough, we got a thermometer in the pan. This is a controller, it's an automatic draw off. So when it gets hot enough, it'll come off. Okay, I said Well, there's some coming right there. Yeah, I said 219 before, but it all depends on the day. So when you got a lower air pressure, the boiling temperature of water is lower. Yep. The syrup is seven degrees above water. Oh, okay. But that's really, like, when you talk about not being exact, like 218.8 is pretty it's close to yeah. 219. But some days, like the other day I was cooking, I was taking off a 217 and a half. Really? And if you, so if you put that up to 219, she'd boil over then. It would you got to keep over. an eye. It would not boil over. But it'd make a bit it'd of a mess. It'd be thicker. Yeah, would it? Okay. Yep. And the problem with making your syrup too thick yep. is it will crystallize in the, in the Oh, bottom, in the, the jug. Jar. And nobody likes that on their pancakes. Well, that's <laughs> where we get most of the, any complaints is there's something in the bottom of my jug. Oh, what and it's it? sugar. It's sugar. Yeah, is what it is. So then it's coming over here into this nice pot. How okay. do you get it into the barrels or into your okay. jug? So after it comes off, we put it through a filter press, okay? Basically, the filter press is just a bunch of plates. This plate is where the sugar sand, okay? Sugar sand, when you're cooking syrup, it boils, it basically comes out of the, out of the sack. It's what it is, is a really, really fine sand. It basically looks like a really fine white sand. Oh, okay. Okay, so it'll, it comes into this, it has to go through one paper, so it comes in one side of the press, it comes out of the other. Okay, so it comes out through here, we'll turn it on. Yep, it's okay. sucking up. Now this is, this is a little dark, like it, it's almost got a little cloudiness yep. to it. That's the sugar that's sand. That's that sugar that's in it. It's the sugar sand. The okay. sugar sand, yep. yeah. We okay. want to, you can eat that fine. Sure. Yeah. It's not going to hurt you. No, no, no. But okay. it's not going to bottle nicely. Yeah. It's not going to look nice. No, no. Okay. So basically, it goes to the filter press. Today, we're filling barrels. And you see how it's nice. Oh, and that's clean. clear. That's syrup. Okay, that there is, is a light grade of syrup. Yeah. Almost an extra light drop. So now, what makes that a light grade of syrup? Um, basically, when you're making syrup at the beginning of, of the season, when you've got the cooler weather, you make the lighter grade of syrup. And as the season goes on, there's, there's different types of sugar in the maple sap, and that balance will change with the weather, with the air pressure, and stuff okay. like that, yep. which gives you your different colors and flavors. So today we're making light, and eventually, maybe next week, we'll make a medium, and then you'll make an amber, and then a dark right at the end of the season. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, you've got a few things here. Yep, this is last year's season, so you can see just what we said there. We start making light, and every day is a little different, mm -hmm. so the temperature has a lot to do with it. Okay. The air pressure, how much the sun's shining, how much, how warm it is, okay? So every day is a little bit different. So these two days last year probably were two warm days. We probably got cooler weather, and right at the end, of course, it got warm. Got and real, got real dark. dark. Yep. So now you guys are bottling it yourself. Yes. And then you sell most of it here? We sell probably 60% of our sales out of here during the mm -hmm. season. And then we have, uh, basically have signs up. People come back or new people that drive by come in. We do sell in stores. We wholesale in containers to uh, a few other places. Mm -hmm. Okay, like conservation areas and stuff to do festivals. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, and then uh, the rest of it, say the darker stuff that we don't want to sell, it's got a really strong flavor, we'll put in those barrels and then we'll wholesale it over there. And what are they going to do with it? They're going to use it in bakeries or in places to make sauces and stuff like that. Basically, when I get that maple flavored barbecue sauce, right it could be coming out of something like that dark, yes. dark syrup. Yeah, absolutely. So you use the darker syrup because it's got a stronger flavor, mm -hmm. so they can use less to enhance it more. Mm -hmm. Well, appreciate the tour today. Okay, thank you.